Um, hold up. I made it this morning. What kind of pack is this? <laughs> well, I don't know if I'm going to disclose how I make it. This is amazing. No, it's the way you're holding the thing <laughs> and the way I'm just going to keep dipping. What's up, you guys? Okay, I am super excited for today because I am here with my girl, Francia. <laughs> okay, I always love seeing you. You always look stunning. You too. And I felt like you were the perfect person to have this conversation with about growing up Latina in Hollywood and how we handled our finances getting in the business so early. Girl. This is gonna get very interesting. Very. So let's dive right in. I bring this every time I'm invited as a guest because I think it's such an honor. And I, I made this this morning. What? So go ahead, you can open it. I'm a little famous for this. First of all, I have to say, Yo, Latinas be so bomb. They come over to your house and they bring little regalitos. That is what it's, and there's a card in here, guys. Thought. Um, hold up. I made it this morning. That's why I was asking for chips. I'm diving in, people. I'm diving right, in. This be is careful. amazing. Yeah. yeah, I know that's, I'm going in. Okay, so this is your specialty. What is yeah. in this? How do you make it? Talk to me. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna disclose how I make it. So you What kind of pack is this? <laughs> a little love, a little Francia sauce. Wait, no, this is bomb. Thank you. <laughs> you literally, you need to package this. I'm working on it, I'm yeah. working on it. Well, you guys, if you want it on shelves, please request it because I'm trying. It is so good. And it's not like, it's got a kick to it, but it's not spicy like it's gonna take you out. Yeah. But it's so flavorful. This is amazing, though. It's the way you're holding the thing <laughs> and the way I'm just gonna keep dipping. Go ahead. <laughs> I love this. Let me tell you, a big part of also handling your finances is becoming an entrepreneur. Yeah. And I'm just saying, let's get this on shelves. Please, Eat thank that. you. Talking about generational wealth, yes. that's what I'm trying to do. But I love that, and we have so many ideas, mm -hmm. things that we grew up with in our kitchens or that your mom made or your dad made. Yeah. And like, we never were the ones to like bring those things to the mass market. Yeah. And now that we're a generation that is like connected on social media, you see everybody like becoming like the tap to shop situation. Like, yeah. hey, you can get this. I make this in my home. You can purchase it. Yeah. Guys. I just want a little bit taste of home in everyone's salsa. It literally tastes like, like, home. like, like home, like familia. Like, like you like, just woke up coughing because of the chile. Yes, yes, it's so good. Thank you. But again, that's how you talk about generational wealth, having an idea like that and actually knowing how to put it into action and to get it into people's houses and homes and hands. So thank we you. We can wait for that. That for Francia sure. specialty, okay? Thank you. I love salsa that. Salsa raiza. Is see. that what it'll be called? Yeah. It's so good. Thank you. When I first started, I was 14, 15. How old were you when you got into 16. this? 16. I had no idea on multiple things. I obviously got into this industry where people do make good amounts of money. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what was like, even what I should be paid, what I shouldn't be paid, no clue. And then when I got payment, if I'm not mistaken, some of it was held for yeah. me until I was 18. Yes, I think that's like legally. Yes, I'm sorry, what is that? It's called the Coogan account. So when you're a minor working in the industry, mm -hmm. because of Macaulay Culkin and what happened with that whole case, now legally you have to form a Coogan account to where a percentage of your money goes into that account and you're not allowed to touch it till you're 18. And what's important about that is your pa parents can't touch it either. So it's a really safe way to yes. keep us safe. The main thing I did not know about was that every time I got paid, I had to pay taxes. Yes, I was not informed of that either. And when I first got a W-2, I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And I had someone tell me and advise me, and I did this for a few years, mm -hmm. to file nine on my dependents. What does that mean? That means that you get paid, you're claiming that you have nine people that you take care of, so you need to get more money up front to pay your bills to take care of them. I did not have nine dependents, I am by myself. so. I was paying more money up front, which means I had to pay more taxes in the end because I didn't know what write-offs were. Exactly. Oh, write-offs. Don't get me into... <laughs> when I found out about write-offs, like at some point someone was like, do you know that everything you do for your business mm -hmm. is a write-off? Everything. But I've heard they've changed it since then. A lot has changed. Yeah, because we used to say like, if you got your nails done, that was a write-off because my image is part of my job. If right. I get my hair done, if I get my hair colored, if I got eyelash extensions, but I've heard they changed it. So now there's a cap amount that you can write off, but at the same time, the industry's changing. Obviously we're on YouTube yeah. and it's gone a little more digital. And especially with the pandemic, 
we have to write off a lot more things because now we're doing content within our homes. Yes. And it's a lot easier to embark into this digital market. So one of the things that I keep encouraging a lot of people is to form a business, an actual LLC, that's so you can start claiming it. You better preach. So that's exactly the first thing that I learned in getting into this business was that I needed an LLC. Fun fact, I named mine after my AOL account. Whatever my screen name was, became my LLC because that's how young I was. Oh my God. First of all, this makes me happy because I'm an AOL fan too. So. Okay, I literally, you're not ready for this. There was a song back in the day, Banco Popular used to do these videos where they would bring together all these salsa singers, like yeah. these like Caribbean artists, Juan Luis Guerra, Mark Anthony, La India, Olga mm -hmm. Tanyong, all these people together and they would do these videos about like, somos un solo pueblo and like, we're all in this together as Caribbean Latinos, whatever. So I would watch this thing, I was obsessed with La India and she did a song on there that said, Borinquen es pura flama mama. And I named my AOL, I was pura flama. <laughs> AOL.com. Is that your escort name, Pura Flama? That, it might as well have been. Like, first of all, was my mom not looking at my username like, girl, what is this? Girl, I'm Pura Flama, which means pure flame. That's, I love it so much. And that was the name of my LLC. So can I tell you, by my AOL, I got made fun of my lips growing up. They were too big, whatever. Thankfully, That's a whole message in itself. Because. Girl Interrupted came out and Angelina Jolie made it popular and I was so defensive of my lips, my email was hotlips at AOL.com. Yes! <laughs> Come on, hot lips! So how do LLCs work? I feel like you're genius and you know all of these things. I understand that it also makes sure that you're protected. Yeah. So that if something goes wrong, like they can't sue you directly as a person and yeah. it's your company. Right. So I'll speak from an entrepreneur standpoint mm -hmm. because that's what we do. And a, there's a lot more entrepreneurs out in the media because of the digital market. Mm -hmm. So an LLC basically does protect you. Yeah. So any income that you make, have it paid towards that LLC. That way, let's say one of the companies sues you, they can't sue all of your assets. Yeah, so it's just that company. It's just that company. Yeah. So they're like, you know, I fell um, at Adrian set or whatever. It's like, okay, well, what's the LLC? And then everything else is protected. So that's one thing. Two, it's just easier for taxes as well. Yes. It's also a great way to build credit. Yeah. What you can do too as an entrepreneur is under the LLC is you put yourself as an employee and then you put, do payroll that's, and you pay yourself from that. That's what I do. Yes. And I used to call it my allowance. Yeah. And Lana, who's part of my business management with my mom and my best friend. And my mom helps handle my accounting because that's what she did for her whole career. And so now I'm like, well, you're retired, but you still got to help me mm -hmm. out. And so she'll keep her eyes on everything, making sure my mortgage is paid, making sure all that kind of stuff. So clearly she is my ally. But I love the fact that I get paid and that's it. Like I don't touch the rest of my money. It's no. literally like I give myself, I'm on payroll. Yeah. I get what I get. Uh, I get paid on the first and on the 15th. Mm -hmm. Literally like I'm an employee. Yeah. Yep. And if I run out of my money, then I ran out of my money. I just wanted to capitalize on the LLCs too as an entrepreneur. One of the things that I wasn't too aware about when I started about mine is retirement. You know, with the yeah. union we have yes. us. But I didn't know so much about a 401k. When you're an entrepreneur, you have to invest your own money into the 401k. That's you right. don't have an employer to do it for you. One of the benefits of that is it's also a tax write-off. So the more that you can put into that, the more that one, you can write off, but two, you also have more money that's being invested. So by the time you are 59 and a half, you have savings and you can retire. Yeah, and you actually have money that you can now live on yeah. for hopefully the rest of because your life. Because no one wants to work when they're about that old. No, I don't, I, I wanna know. go on vacation. I want to work because I want to. Not Wait, I are we low key going to be a little Rita Moreno though? Yes. I feel like we're going to be so bored if we stopped working. We'll wow. be like way in our 90s. Like, please tell me what my call time is, you know? Probably. That's I always say that I want what Ali Wong wishes for, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to lie down. I do want to lean in. You'll lie down for four days and then be like, all right, I'm ready. You're crazy. I'm ready. I'm ready. So true. Yeah. Obviously, getting into this early on, there wasn't a lot of information we had from our parents. Right. So I'm listening to you talk about LLCs and 401ks and I'm, girl, we're gonna have to have a conversation <laughs> after this because there's things that I still don't yeah. know. I'm still learning. Yeah. Who taught you all of this? My current financial advisor. I learned the very hard way. My parents did not teach me. My parents did not know. A lot of what I know now, they're, you know, learning because of me. But, mm -hmm. you know, I grew up a little differently. My dad is famous in the Latin markets. Even though we didn't have money for the first 
what, five, six years of my life, and I do remember those days, I, it wasn't my truth for the rest of my life. Yeah. My first car was a Lexus SC430. Nice. We lived in a six bedroom mansion, like it was, so they didn't teach me anything. If I got good grades, I got $100. If I got straight A's, it was 500, but I would always finagle three in there. So I had nice. zero concept of money, just like wow. how to make it. And that is very different because you would think to yourself, oh, she comes from money, then she's gonna have this all mapped out for her. No. No. No, and my dad didn't understand a lot either. He lost a lot because he trusted the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And so I was in a very tough position. I was recommended to my financial advisor mm -hmm. and I heard this line in Philadelphia and I used it on him. I said, talk to me like I'm two years old because I do not know what I'm doing. I started making a lot of money at a very young age. I'm in my mid twenties right now and I don't know my left from my right. So please explain it to me. And literally Literally, ever since then, that was in 2017, every phone call we have is no less than two hours because he's literally breaking everything down. I'm there with my notebook and every time I'm, I do something because he makes sure that I pay myself on payroll and that I understand everything, he explained 401ks to me and the one thing he explained to me that I never even thought about was not to use a debit card use a credit card because it protects you from fraud. Also, it helps you build credit. I'm really big about traveling, so I wanna garner points so I can travel, but then also I know, uh, now I'm learning that there's credit cards that offer cash back. So if mm. there's a month where I'm like, ooh, I'm a little short on cash, I can use my points to pay for it. The trick is though, not to get too many credit cards. Yeah. Like, I, I, I have a fair amount, but it, it fits my lifestyle. So yeah. what fits your lifestyle? What do you need and why do you need to build credit and where is that credit going towards? The reality is most people don't want to do the work. No. People don't want to sit on the phone for two hours. They don't want to take notes. And so I don't think they realize how that's going to affect them in the long run. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you how it affects them in the wrong way. I had a credit card at I think I was like 22 or 23 mm -hmm. and I was bawling out of control until that Bill statement came. came and I was like, oh my God, you guys are not ready. I actually spent $80,000 in a month. But that sounds about right with what we do, I'll be honest. On a credit card, which sounds insane to me even now. <clears throat> I am more financially stable now and I'm like, I would never on, Don't I bought a Balenciaga leather vest, why? I, by the way, I can't tell you where that vest is. And then <clears throat> if I'm being honest, I couldn't pay it and I ended up having to go on a payment plan yeah. with the company. I and lost all my ranking. I had a platinum card. It was it was taken away. It was and that's more interest so embarrassing. that is being charged. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's I what ended people up don't back know. Way more. I'm hopeful that this next generation will take the time to yeah. learn all of this, so they don't make the same mistakes that we did with us and the LLCs. Like, yes, I pay myself, but then that money that I'm paying myself, I'm like, okay. I'm gonna put it into a separate account that I'm not gonna touch because eventually I wanna buy a house and I'm just gonna start racking up money here mm -hmm. and this is my spending money and then this is my business money. Yeah. And so now I have more than a couple accounts open because yeah. I'm just saving. What I really encourage people to do is get a brokerage account because those that's the money that you use that your financial advisor is gonna mm -hmm. use to invest. But I grew up translating for my parents. Yes. And I didn't know what the translating and I know there's still a, things would come in the mail and I'd be like, están diciendo que you yes, know no. this. Yeah, like, and then they ask you, que quiere decir eso? Yo no sé, yo no más estoy diciendo lo que estoy leyendo. Yeah. So this is another reason why I'm glad we're having this conversation mm -hmm. for first generationers that are translating. And even if this sounds like crazy talk, at least you have an idea. Okay, what's a 401k? Let me look that up. Who do I know that works in finance? And yeah. believe me or, or not, people are willing to help. So if you know someone that is an accountant, ask questions. Or if you have know someone that has, does really well financially, ask them, who's your financial advisor? Could you recommend me? If they can't take you as a client, they can recommend someone else. People are willing to help. Absolutely. A lot of times I was afraid to ask questions yeah. and I feel like a lot of the audience might be too because of this. I used to get made fun of. What's this? You don't know what that is? Well, where you feel know. stupid and you're like, oh, uh, no, of course I do and whatever. Just say, no, I don't. So rather than making fun of me, why don't you be a leader and explain it to me? That is such a good thing to say. Like literally be like, no, I, re I really don't. I'm looking for you to lead me. That's what everyone wants to do ultimately yeah. is mentor someone. So instead of making fun of me, lead me. I actually sat down with my mom and had this kind of similar conversation of just like finances and the things that she did not teach me because she genuinely didn't know. Didn't know, yeah. I was told to like never have a credit card because yeah. she was 
fearful that like when I turned 18, all these credit cards showed up in the mailbox and she's like, no, it's a trap. Don't account for, for money you don't have. Right. Well, just like anything in life, if you're not educated on it, don't do it. I think I am a surgeon because I watch Grey's Anatomy. They put me in that OR, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And I'd rather research how to use a scalpel than just trust that McDreamy taught me, you know? Yeah. So like, do the research. You gotta do the research. So literally, I had like no credit. I'm talking, I'm making money and it's just sitting there oh in the bank God. so bad that when I got here to do the real, Warner Brothers had put me in the Palazzo the first time for the for like the pilot run, whatever. So I'm like, amazing, this is where I'm gonna live now that we've gotten picked up and I'm gonna live here. Went to go get the apartment and I was denied. Because of your credit. Because of my lack. And of you didn't credit. have any credit. I had yeah. no credit, my credit score was so low. I ended up having to ask my sister if she would co-sign me so that I could get the apartment. Which is crazy because you're like, I make I money! Made, that was me! Yeah. I was like, I got money! And it's simple things like that that I feel like if I could share that information with yeah. someone else, it would make the world of a difference in your life. You know, it could save you from like very embarrassing moments in the uh, leasing office. Especially when you're like famous yes. and there's this common they misconception that we're rich. Yeah, that's another one. That's a common misconception. Success does not always mean that you're rich and even when you are making great money, that doesn't mean you're making wise decisions with that money. With, yeah. And that's why we've seen so many people that came into the industry at a young age yeah. and they didn't save their money. Mm -hmm. They're not in a financially good place. And you're like, what happened? Mm -hmm. It's because no one had these conversations that we're having no. with them. And no one tells you that the success you're having could end. And that's that part. the part about our industry. No one saves. No. For the tragic day that you're not famous. I literally said to myself the other day out loud, I was like, yo, if Instagram doesn't exist, like if tomorrow, you know when Instagram goes down? Go. Like, what is the world without Instagram? Because the reality is as influencers or entrepreneurs, a lot of my money comes from yeah. Instagram. My sales for Levoot, XIX, like those things really do come from Instagram. And I was like, well, where would I advertise that we have a launch? Like, you know? Right. And I was like, do I have savings put aside for if all of that was to end tomorrow? Very scary and tragic thing to think about. It but. Is. I need to prepare. Well, and I'm gonna talk as an actor, because yeah. you know this, from an actress perspective, I have been working consistently for the last 17, 18 years. Thank you very much. Bravo. But what you don't know is, I've been on three successful TV shows now, amazing, happy, I love it, but you have a contract with the network that you're with. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest gift that you could get, is to be a series regular, and you know this. Yes. But unfortunately, when you're done filming a season, you're on hiatus. And you're you, waiting to see if the show gets picked, picked up. up. And you don't get paid during that time. Mm -hmm. So you have, well, uh, you know, like I'm doing 20 episodes, 20 weeks where I know I'm getting a paycheck and then what? And you know, sometimes you book, sometimes you don't. So what did I do with that, that money that I made? Investing it. I, you know, I bought my second home recently. It's amazing. You know, I'm buying investment properties. I didn't have this information before, but as an entrepreneur, sometimes you just don't know where it's going to come from. And honestly, I wish Instagram existed when I was growing up, when I was on Secret Life. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, because people were obsessed with your character. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. I would, I would have been a different place in my yes. life. But it's okay. Things happen. It's so wild because, guys, the reality is you have to figure out how to market yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think even for us, the transition of being like teenager to, to even adult. womanhood, how you market that and how you transition that is really difficult. I just transitioned. Do you realize that How I Met Your Father is the first time that I am that not playing true. a teenager? That is true, that is I, true. You guys don't know this, but I was depressed for a very long time because I could not graduate out of being a teenager. Wow. And so I was stuck with the teenage mentality in my personal life and it affected my finances, it affected my personal life, it affected my relationships. I'm This is why I'm sharing all of this because yeah. I'm so much happier knowing that I'm, I'm turning 34 in a in, um, but the couple fact weeks. That you turned 34 and you were on Grownish four minutes ago. <laughs> four minutes ago playing like, hey. 21. We, you were like, 18, 19. Yeah, like, you know, like, oh my God. I was 29 when I booked that and I'm scared, like I gotta look young, oh my God. But yeah. how did you get to a place, and that's still really long, like in your 20s to be like, I need a financial advisor. Yeah. What was the moment that you're like, hold up, I need help, let me go find a financial advisor? First big purchase um, was a house mm -hmm. and I was, wait, I was 20. Come through, I thought mine was Gucci sunglasses, I. 
She said a whole house. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how amazing it was at the time because my parents didn't teach me nothing about nothing. I literally went to my dad one day and I said, Dad, I need to move out. I lived in Northridge at the time and I said, I travel to Hollywood every day for auditions yeah. and I'm sleeping in my car in between auditions. Like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I'm gonna move out when I turn 18. Mm -hmm. So my dad was super controlling and he came to me one day, a month before my 18th birthday and was like, here's a key. And he bought me a condo, a three-story condo in Los Feliz. I grew up spoiled, I'm gonna admit it, which, okay, cool, but I lost the opportunity to go apartment yeah. hunting. So Ugh. I didn't get that, which I didn't understand at the time. And again, he was like, I can come whenever I want. I'm like, no, you can't. <laughs> so I'm living in this place and yeah. then I got in a huge fight with my dad and I was like, screw you. And he wanted me to take on the mortgage. I didn't know what a mortgage was. So I called my business manager at the time and I was like, my dad said he's not gonna pay the mortgage anymore and he wants me to pay it. He's like, how much is it? And it was like 6,000 a month for a $600,000 condo. And he's like, that doesn't make any sense. I didn't know that my dad refinanced. Someone told him to do that. He doesn't know. So I was like, okay, well, I don't want to move. He goes, Francia, you make enough money to where you can buy a house. And I was like, um, okay. Still not understanding the concept. Yeah, because I moved from a, so real. a mansion to a condo and my business manager saying buy a house. Buy a house. I was like, okay. He goes, you can afford an $800,000 house. And I was like, Okay, so at the time to put 20% down, I can't do the math right now, but is that like 50 grand? No, 80,000. 20%. Eight, so 20%, 160,000. Okay, she can do math. Mira. Is that good math? 80 plus 80 is 160,000. Like so 160, that's right. Mira, that she can do math. Put down 160,000. Hey, I'm not lying. My brain to work. I want to be able to do that, so my friend is tutoring me right now because I'm like, where's the calculator? Everyone's like, you're 21, you bought this, and no one explained Amazing. what a big deal, but I didn't get it. Yeah. Because I grew up in this lifestyle already. It's like a bubble. A, a bubble. So, you know, I'm paying, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all of this stuff, and then my show ends. And so I had to sell my house. And I was like, okay. And we, honestly, I wanted to get out because mm -hmm. I was in there for eight years, and the energy I allowed to come into my house. Wow. Day in and day out, whether it was men or friends, I could tell you that for about two years before I actually left, I would sit in my car for two hours because I didn't want to go inside. I need a financial what? advisor. This was the moment, like, yeah. I gotta get this under control. Right, he gave me someone, I called him, his name is George, and I literally said, this is what happened, this is how old I am, and I don't understand how this happened. Mm -hmm. And for, so that was 2017, we're in 2022. In five years, I now have two houses. I hope that right now somebody is watching this and they're like, they are my financial allies right now in this moment. But why do you think it is important to have a financial ally? Just like it's important to have any sort of community. Mm. That's important to have family close, mm -hmm. friends close. It's important to have a financial ally so you don't make the mistakes that we did. So you have someone that you can trust. So you can someone have someone that you can turn to. Like, I uh, love more educated. what you also were saying was when you said community, all I heard was accountability. Oh, accountability. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you have someone who you're, like you just can't go below, like there's somebody that's actually being an ally for you telling mm -hmm. you, not the best thing you should be yeah. doing. Why don't you try this instead? You know what I mean? The one bomb advice my mom gave me, and it actually was when I was much older, I think it was maybe in my 20s, she had been watching Oprah and her like Sunday whatever, like she would watch like everything Oprah Winfrey. And she's like, you know, you know Oprah signs her own checks. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is, what is your obsession? She would tell me. You know, Oprah, she looks at everything. Once a month, she sits down, she looks at everything. Oprah signs her own checks, Adrian. And that stayed with me. And it's again, it's about being knowledgeable, accountable, and that you have to do the work. Francia, I could talk to you all day. Yeah, I love so this. Fun. You are so filled with so much information. And just hearing from everything, you've been in this game, girl. Long time. Long Just as long as you. Honey. Listen, we holding on. Guys, if this was helpful to you at all, comment below and let us know maybe any tips you have about finding a financial ally. Love you guys. Mwah. Mwah. Don't forget to subscribe. That was so fun. You want more Wait. chips? Yes, I do, and I want my salsa. Where I don't know where it is.